As we know, Elon Musk and effectively the US government are not on good terms. So this video will explore a hypothetical situation that was threatened by US President Trump at one point. To cut Elon's SpaceX company from US government subsidies and contracts. Now that would make life harder for SpaceX, but we will look here at the other side of the coin. If US government, the Pentagon specifically, stops working with SpaceX, how much would that impact Pentagon's capabilities? This video will cover the costs of launch with and without SpaceX, the unique SpaceX satellites offering special capabilities, as well as the impact such a rift might make on Trump's Golden Dome missile defense project. SpaceX works with NASA too. A short-term problem would arise if their Dragon spacecraft, the sole US crewed spacecraft, would not be available. But let's stick with impact on the Department of Defense. For the Pentagon, SpaceX primarily ferries satellites into orbit, through the NSSL program, which standardizes launches and maintains affordability. The US Space Forces Space Development Agency is its largest user. SpaceX competitors include United Launch Alliance and Blue Origin, which is owned by Jeff Bezos. Future launches of the said trio are contracted through 2029. The government is planning two mission types, basically shuttle services to put satellites in orbit, 30 less demanding missions named Lane 1 and 54 complex missions, Lane 2, requiring high reliability and security. In a previous contract, SpaceX won 9 out of 9 Lane 1 missions, so it's again likely to secure most of the 30 simpler missions. For the complex Lane 2 missions, it's already known it secured more than half, with contracts worth 5.9 billion. Lane 1 contracts are worth 5.6 billion. Blue Origin's new Glenn rocket, test launched this year, is new, and its first stage failed to land safely for reuse, raising concerns about future launch reliability. The bigger competitor is ULA's Vulcan Centaur, also new. It first launched in 2024 and only once more since. Curiously, it uses the same Blue Origin-made engines for its first stage as the new Glenn. New Glenn eventually aims for full reusability, which will take years to develop. Vulcan Centaur's partial reusability is still in development, also potentially years away. SpaceX thus remains the dominant player. Despite the Pentagon's efforts to diversify launch providers, SpaceX handles over half the missions. Its future Starship rocket might further increase its share. Comparing launch costs, Vulcan Centaur is the most expensive, while New Glenn's variable estimate likely reflects unproven reusability. Keep in mind, rocket capabilities differ, some carry larger payloads. When considering payload, the outdated Delta IV shows past inefficiencies. Falcon and Glenn rocket price ranges depend on reusability, which impacts fuel allocation. Whether all the fuel goes towards the launch or whether some fuel gets reserved for landing. Pure cost per mass isn't the sole metric. Falcon 9 is used more frequently than the cheaper Falcon Heavy, often hitting cargo volume limits before weight limits. Falcon Heavy is disadvantaged here, with the larger fairing only now being tested, and its availability lags the widely used Falcon 9. This suggests SpaceX's Falcon 9 might remain important to Pentagon plans, even if New Glenn matches Falcon Heavy's price per kilo, while offering greater volume. So if the Pentagon ends SpaceX contracts, penalties would be owed for prepared 2025 launches. But crucially, there literally wouldn't be enough third-party rockets available on the market for planned Pentagon launches. Blue Origin planned 12 flights in 2025 and 24 in 2026 if reusability works, but only half a dozen are currently slated for 2025, including commercial ones. Vulcan Centaur aims for 20 launches in 2025, with 14 of those planned for the US government, if everything goes right. This leaves United Launch Alliance with little room for short-notice rocket allocation to the Pentagon. Blue Origin might divert a few more rockets, but both would likely charge more to offset commercial penalties. While 2026 might see slight improvement, ramping up rocket production is difficult. A rocket like Vulcan Centaur takes up to two years to construct. 
Given SpaceX's contracts for likely 60% of the 84 upcoming launches, it could take until 2030 for the ULA and Blue Origin to produce enough rockets for all the planned missions they missed out on. Eliminating SpaceX would result in Pentagon getting fewer GPS, recon and surveillance satellites into orbit during a transitional period, temporarily impacting US warfighting ability. Launches would also be more expensive due to the removal of the largest competitor, prompting other companies to charge more for urgent replacement launches. Even after normalization, taking a few years, launch prices would likely remain elevated without SpaceX's competitive pressure, which was central to the space launch renaissance. While competitors would eventually replicate SpaceX's technical advancements and full reusability, reduced competition would keep final prices higher. Furthermore, the Pentagon would miss out on potential future benefits of SpaceX's Starship rocket, which has been undergoing test flights since 2023. While current Starship launch costs are high, SpaceX aims for $100 million per customer, potentially leading to an incredibly low $250 to $500 per kilo into orbit. That's all when and if development is successful which might take some more years. SpaceX intends Starship to be as easy to launch as Falcon 9, with full reusability, unlike Falcon Heavy. Its own future Starlink satellites are designed in such a way that they fully utilize SpaceX's Starship's dimensions and capabilities. Essentially, if the Pentagon terminates contracts with SpaceX, it would forego significant cost savings and rocket availability when Starship deploys at scale becoming tied to less competitive products. No other company is developing a rocket in the similar class and price range. You might think this is bad for Trump's Golden Dome missile defense shield. It will likely use thousands of short lifespan satellites, requiring constant launches over decades. Imagine paying $1500 per kilo for payload to orbit with non-SpaceX companies, instead of 500 or less if SpaceX competed. While this difference might shrink as competitors improve, SpaceX could also continue optimizing its processes. However, here's the catch. These short lifespan satellites would likely contain tiny missiles, weighing under 100 kilos each. Even at 100 kilos and needing 2,000 mini-satellites annually at $1,500 per kilo, that's only $300 million per year. New Glenn's cargo fairing could probably cram in a few hundred of these 3 by one foot mini-satellites, meaning likely under 10 rocket launches annually to get 2,000 satellites into orbit. For comparison, the much smaller Falcon 9 regularly launched over 50 Starlink satellites, each weighing 300 kilos. So, while the overall impact of no SpaceX would be felt, the recent significant drop in launch cost per kilo means the Pentagon wouldn't see it as a serious issue. It might add a few hundred million dollars annually to the Golden Dome's cost, but if the total cost of the Golden Dome, including development, satellites, interceptors and management, is 10 billion or more per year, this added cost would be quite manageable. The bigger issue than money might be the timeline, due to the insufficient number of available rockets to get enough satellites into orbit in the next few years. Even an extra billion dollars per year, including all other Pentagon satellite launches, isn't a real problem for the Pentagon, given its annual budget of $1 trillion. What would be a bigger problem is this. In recent years, the Pentagon has contracted SpaceX to design and build various communication and surveillance satellites for the US military under the Starshield program, though specifics remain secret. Some surveillance satellites are to contribute to the Golden Dome program. SpaceX's comms technology, tested by the DoD since 2019, allegedly offers better bandwidth and more focused jam-resistant beams than previous Pentagon comms satellites. Beyond Starshield, the US government has helped other militaries integrate the vast Starlink network, which, despite being commercial, might be utilized by the Pentagon in wartime due to its unmatched user density and coverage. There is really nothing else even remotely close to the Starlink constellation. Stopping work with SpaceX would cut the Pentagon off from a very potent and cost-effective communication and surveillance satellite network. 
While Starshield sensors might be third-party provided, most other components are likely SpaceX supplied, leveraging its Starlink hyper-production experience for low satellite prices. This video didn't focus on damage to SpaceX, which could be huge if it loses government contracts. But in the long run, it would hurt the US government too, as the market would see less competition, lowering the prices. So in this Musk versus Trump feud, one cannot hurt the other without also hurting themselves. Without SpaceX's affordable satellites, cheap launches and mass availability via its large rocket fleet, the Pentagon would face significant problems taking several years, possibly a decade, to fully resolve. In the arms race with China, such a delay is something the US might not want to face.